wa Delta TV wale kubanga oche kumide ku Delta TV program ya fe tusome ilanga mu studio rona kolwa lero teacher liyombe brand okuba ku mengo senior nzenzize okulaba anga tusomera ko wamu a uh, musomo ya fe ya mathematics ilanga olwa lero tugenda kubanga tusoma olevo mathematics a uh, ngatoki ya fe rona kolwa lero je tugenda ku discussing ako igenda uh, kuba vectors uh, somo lino uh, oba topic yeno olevo uh, episode ebisinga etigeza akonyo kutawanya abayizi banji so today uh, i want to discuss vectors and to make sure that by the time i leave uh, many of us uh, outside there will be able to attempt numbers on vectors and will be able to know the do's and the don'ts of vectors but basically what does vector involves so when we talk about vectors uh, basically uh, in physics by definition a vector has these two things a vector must have magnitude and then must have a direction so when we talk about a vector you expect those two things and uh, you find that uh, we represent vectors in two ways we have what we call the column vector form uh, we have the column vectors uh, column vectors uh, when we represent vectors by column vectors we basically give what we call the position vectors and when you are talking about a position vector a position vector is uh, measured with respect to the origin O and when you are looking at vectors at all level we only look at vectors in two dimensions that is the x axis and the y axis so if I have a point A having coordinates 2 1 then in vector form uh, point A with respect to the origin we call it OA because that is what we call the position vector. And we represent OA as 2, the x component, and y, and 1, the y component. So this is what we call the column vector form. So a column vector is like when you look at the coordinate form or the coordinate representation of a point. When you are looking at a point A, it is 2, 1. But when you're looking at its position vector, that is measured from uh, the origin to where that point is, then becomes O, A, and then that point becomes 2, 1 in the column vector form. Now, what happens in the vectors is that since vectors have direction, if I have O, A, If I have O A as 2, 1, the moment I change direction and now I'm moving from A to O, then direction has changed. And we show change in directions in vectors by putting a negative sign. So O A, so the A O, this is supposed to be A. O because you are changing from now A to O. The moment I change direction, I was moving from O to A. The moment I change direction from A to O, then I must put a negative. The negative uh, signifies that now I've changed direction and I'm moving in the opposite direction. Uh, when you are looking at the vectors, basically, even if I'm moving from, I stay in Namungona, then I'm going to town, Kampala. Uh, the distance bet between Namungona and Kampala can be five kilometers. But if I'm looking at the vectors and I'm looking at motion from Namungona to Kampala, that is positive five kilometers. But the moment I change and I'm now coming from Kampala to Namungona, then it changes to negative 5. Why? 
I'm now moving in the opposite direction. So the negative in vectors simply signifies the change in direction. So most times learners forget this. Sometimes it's moving from A to O, but it maintains the positive sign. And in most cases in our vectors, we are given the vectors and the magnitude. So we are given the magnitude and the direction. And when motion is taking place, sometimes the directions have to change. Now, what do learners have to note? The most important thing So this is B. So that is all B. Now in most cases, there are many things that may be required of us. You may find that we have say point M on A B and we are given that A M to M B is one to two. Now, if this is our vector, first, there are things that may be required of us. Say, we may need the vector AB. And then the vector OM. And maybe later they can ask coordinates. Coordinates of m now how do we get vector a b go to b in Uganda, okutambula uh, okuva ku A paka ku B kiroze konti wano wasibeto sobola kuyita wo oba wali wo load block then you know kuba panya kati ogenda kuwo cha panya okuva ku A ogende wali B So the panyas are the vectors how do you move you move from A to O because that root is not closed then you move from O to B because that one is also not closed. Your, uh, your will is to move from A to B but the direct route is closed so you have to look for all ways of landing to B. So you have to look for routes that will land you there. So those routes are what we call the vectors that you take. So if you want to move from A and then go to B then you shall move from A and go to O. Then from there we move from O and go to B. So there we have moved from A to B. Now you note that the starting point is also the starting point in our vector. And the end point should be the end point in our vectors. Now somebody, uh, I've seen this several times, uh, Elana says AB is OA plus OB. Now check out this. You're starting from A, but this fellow is instead starting from B. Unless if you're a magician and you are in Namungona, but you're starting your motion at Kasubi, that can never happen. Hmm? If you are in Namungona and you want to go to Waise, then you move from Namungona to Kasubi, from Kasubi to Sapolo, then from Sapolo to, to Waise. So if uh, that's the motion, you cannot be in Namungona, then you start motion in Kasubi. That is never possible. So, if motion starts at A, then even in your vectors, you should start with point A. 
And if motion ends at B, even your vectors should end with letter B. So it's a connection. You're connecting from this route to another, and eventually you end up where you want to, to go. So if you want to move from A to O, remember we are given O A. And we said the moment you change direction, the change in direction uh, is notified by putting a negative on the previous vector. So this basically becomes the negative of OA. Remember, OA was given to us. The moment you change from A to O, it is the negative of the previous vector given to you. Then plus OB. So, eventually, uh, because this is negative and when you are writing, it's better to start with a positive. So, we start with positive OB, then minus OA. Now, this is what basically what learners gram. That if I want to move from A to B, then it is the position vector of the last vector minus the position vector of the first vector. But there are vectors whereby the roots are not only two. For example, if I want to move from O to M, I may have many roots to take. If I add, say, a point here, then I may move from, if I want to move, for example, from A to M, I may move from A to O. If I add a point P here, then O to P, then P to M. You may find that you're taking more than two roots. So this subtraction may not work in such a case. So we're going to go into a short commercial break, then when we come back, we'll be able to finish up this. Welcome back from that short commercial break. We're still looking at our number on vectors, and uh, we are at a point where we're trying to get the vector the two points through which you pass to go to your destination so this subtraction may not work all the time so uh, using what we are given in the question OB is 4 4 and OA is 1 uh, negative 2 so eventually our AB becomes uh, 4 minus 1 is 3, and 4 minus minus 2 becomes 6. Now, uh, that is AB obtained. But we also need to get the vector OM. But when you look at OM, M is on AB. Now, some learners, when they get the vector AM, they think they have obtained a vector OM, which is very wrong. So they come and say AM because they gave us this. AM, they gave us a ratio. AM to MB is 1 to 2. Now when you're given vectors in terms of ratios, you have to get the vector where this lies. Now M divides a, B in the ratio 1 to 2. So that means that you have to get the total ratio which is 1 plus 2 and that gives you a 3. Now when you look at A, M, A, M takes the value 1, M, B takes the value 2. So that means that A, M is 1 out of 3 of that whole vector AB because that's where AM lies. So to get AM to be 1 out of 3 of the vector AB, but we got AB, it is 3, 
six. Now, one thing that you need to know is when you are multiplying a scalar or a constant by a vector, this constant is supposed to be multiplied by each of those components. So I multiply a third by three and I also multiply a third by six. Some learners multiply vectors as if they are multiplying fractions. You find somebody multiplying one by three and three by six and that is very wrong. Vectors are not fractions. So we get AM as when I multiply a third by three I get one and when I multiply a third from O to A, then A to M. Now it's better to opt for the other route. Why? You already have AM, but you don't have BM. So since you have AM, it's better to come and say, to move from O to M, see, better that we take the route O to A, then from A to M. M would be 1 over 3 A B. So it's uh, you look at what basically uh, you require from the statement in vectors then make what you need the subject and later use it in the calculations. So basically that was our first example to explain to us what we basically do as far as vectors are concerned. One thing that uh, sometimes they may ask from us is to find the magnitude of a vector. Magnitude or
the magnitude of vector a would be the square root of 3 squared plus 4 squared which would be the square root of 16 plus 9 which is 25 and the square root of 25 is 5 oh, units so that's how we get the magnitude sometimes questions can come when you're given the magnitude and all we need from you is to find any unknown let us say if a So, you have to get the square root of 120. So, x would be the square root of 120. So, remember one thing that when you get the square root, you get two values. So, when you get the square root of this, we'll get um, square root 120. That's around 10.954. But when you get the square root, you get two values. So you get a positive and a negative value. So the two possible values of x would be plus or minus 10.954. So basically, that's what they can ask us about magnitude. Now, I have a few questions that we have formulated from our Delta math group and the learners wanted us to discuss this. So the first question says, find the value of x and y, find the value component of uh, the horizontal component this side on the left must be equivalent to the horizontal component on the left but first thing we can do is to 
uh, do the summation or the subtraction on the left. So that we have negative 9, negative 3. Now this 3 has to multiply by each of those components. So that we have minus 3 times x, you get 3x. 3 times y, you get 3y. Equals now the 2 also has to multiply the, the 3 and the 2. But since it is negative, we multiply and we get negative 6 and negative 4. So every time you have a scalar or a constant outside of these vectors, that constant is multiplied. negative 6. So what do we do? We can take the negative 9 on the right hand side. When we take negative is 3. So divide by negative 3, divide by negative 3, so you get x as negative 1. So you do the same also for the x, comp sorry, the y component, you have negative Case you happen. of P equals the magnitude of Q. Now at this point we know how to obtain magnitude. Now it says find the scalar T. t
the squares of the components. So times 2 squared plus 1 squared. Times the root of 5 equals the root of, uh, this is 9 plus 1, which is 10. Now, how do we remove the square roots? Or, if possible, we can divide this side, and you say, divide by root 5, divide by root 5. So that will end up with the T as... Uh, root of 10 over 5. When you have root 10 over root 5, the same as having root 10, root of 10 over 5. So eventually you get t as the root of 2. But remember I said every time you get a root, you have to get two values. So either t is plus or minus uh, 2. Root 2 rather. So that would be the value of t. Uh, the other way, if you did not do that, you could say that Three A D equals to A B. B. Now we need to find the odd D from that vector. But odd D, sorry, D is on vector AB. So the first thing we have to do is to find the vector on which D lies. So what do we do? We find
welcome back from that short break. Uh, we ended when we found vector a b, and we said vector a b would be uh, vector b minus a. Now we need to find o d. But look at this. If you had to find o d, o d would be o a plus a d o o b plus b d but b d will mean that you're changing the direction to b a so in most cases use a direction vector that you already have of b by this
D to A M is one to two. Beg that you follow, try to follow clearly because I'll be removing a part of this because we don't have enough space here. So, as we work out, keep, in, keep some of the data with you so that because we need it to work out part of the other questions, and yet we have already removed it. So, as we, we are working. Plus, when I divide this by 6, I'll simply get 1. So I'll get 2a minus 5b. So eventually, the bm becomes, when I have 9 minus 5, I get 4b. Plus 2a divided by 6. Now, 2 and 4 and the 6 have a common factor of 2 so you can divide and you get bm when i factor that 2 up and i divide by 6 i remain with 2b plus a over the re so that is bm now somebody else could have used b o plus o a plus a m remember we have a m already here so still you will get the same answer uh, i've not used that root because it would look like it's a longer root but it's not long because you have a m already here we didn't have d m and we had to first get d m so you find that it's almost the same thing whether you use the shorter one whose value you didn't have but you have to first find it or use the three step root but with all the values already calculated so it's almost the same thing then we need dc we need a vector dc now where is dc this is here but to move from d to c you need to move from D to O, then from O to C. But we don't have O C, though we can get it from this statement. So I have to get O C now. O C. Now O C equals to 3 am and am we have it here so o c is 3 into 1 over 3 into 5b minus 2a now you find that this 3 will cancel with this 3 and the o c will be when this 3 cancels the 3 remain with 5b minus 2a. Always whatever you need to work out the question is given. You need OC. But you have OC equals to 3CE and still OC equals 3am. So to get 
OC just got directed to 3 or AM because AM was already calculated. So to get DC, we said DO plus OC. It is D to O, then from O to C. But remember, we said that DO is a change in direction. But OD was A. So eventually, DC becomes 10B minus 5, that gives you 5B minus 4A over 2. So that is DC. How did we get DC? First, we said we have to get D2O. D2O is known. Was just the negative of OD. But OC was not known, so we had to first find the OC using this statement. So always check whether you have utilized all the statements made in the question. So this is OC is 3 AM and AM is here, so we multiply it by 3, the 3 cancels, you remain with, with that. So now we are left with only one part. That is showing that AD D to OC is 3 to 8. Now, we have both of them already. We have AD We have AD So we have AD, AD was, let me write it, AD, AD was AO plus OD, but AO is negative A plus 5B over 2. So this one, when you factorize or when you simplify, you get AD as 5B minus 2A out of 2. Then we need OC. OC, uh, OC is what we have just calculated. OC, OC was... 3 AM So eventually, we get our OC, OC as 5B 
b minus 2a. Then o e also need o e. O e If we need O E, O E would be O C plus C E. So this one would be O C is this five B minus two A plus C E. We can get C E from here and C E. Let me first write the statement. C E C E is three C E equals to three A M. So C E equals to A M. So C E is a third into five B minus 2a so to get c os e is supposed to be oc oc is 5 b minus 2a plus 1 out of 3 into 5b minus 2a so we get the lcm uh, since uh, I no longer need this, I'll remove this. B minus 2a so this gives you the LCM is 3 uh, 3 times this we get 3 divided by 1 then times 5 that is 15 B uh, minus this is 6a plus 5b uh, minus 2a so we end up with OE as this plus this is 20 B then this minus that is 80 a so this Yes, welcome back from that short break. Uh, if we are finding vector O E and we have vector A D already, so E is for
uh, P plus Q over. Now the LCM here is 6. Now 6 divided by 3 is 2. So times negative 2 get negative 4P. Plus this is uh, 3 times that. You get 3P plus 3Q. So eventually uh, we get XY as 3Q now 3p minus 4p you get negative p then over 6 so that is our xy then we are left with finding the vector y z now y is here and z there so we can move from y to q then q to z so y z is y q plus q z don't take the longer root of y p plus p o then plus o z that's a longer root though it will give you the same results so since we're at y q is a half of uh, PQ, which is Q minus 